Oh, beef. Uh, it's for what's, what's for dinner. It's what's for dinner if you want to wind up dead and have your children faced with a hot, bleak, dying planet. Beef's not really good for it. But uh, the truth is, uh, from a medical point of view, yeah, this has become well known. Um, the, the fat and cholesterol damages the arteries. And paleo folks uh, uh, have a hard time accepting it, but the, the truth is it, it certainly does. Um, the, um, the protein is, can be damaging to the liver and the kidneys. But from an ecological point of view, there's no animal on the planet, prized as it is, from around the world, from Africa to the American West, uh, IR beef. <clears throat> but they are four-legged environment and future-destroying machines. Uh, every um, uh, bovine, every cow, a steer, uh, uh, drinks 50 gallons of water a day. Um, the grains that are used to feed these animals um, takes up the majority of water used in America today. People are facing water shortages across the country and around the world. Most of America, 70 percent of all the water in, in the continental United States goes to irrigate alfalfa or grow corn and soybeans uh, that are poured down the gullet. Um, beef animals uh, to make cheap cheeseburgers. Uh, these burgers that sell for two dollars each, those are government subsidized. They, gov they subsidize the grain farmers, the soybean farmers. If those burgers really sold for what it really cost to produce them, if the beef producers really had to pay for the water and pay to clean up the streams and, and the rivers and pay to mitigate all the greenhouse gases, these animals belch methane, um, they uh, uh, breathe out carbon dioxide, the fertilizers spread in those corn and soybean fields release nitrous oxide. These are the three most powerful greenhouse gases uh, known to science and are beef consumption, our beef production consumption is driving all of them. If, if those costs were factored into the burger and you stopped the, the government subsidies for the grains, these burgers would cost $100 a piece and you would only eat them twice a year and that would be a far more reasonable uh, uh, schedule to eat them on. Uh, on every level, um, beef is the, is the, uh, the hummer of, uh, of, of Western nutrition. And I would urge viewers, please get and read the magnificent book by Dr. Richard Oppenlander called Comfortably Unaware. And he will lay out exactly uh, the problem with beef and all of, of animal agriculture, but, but of all the problems that uh, animal agriculture will create. Uh, the beef is the, is the uh, hood ornament uh, because it, uh, it's the most egregious uh, of all the environmental transgressors that, uh, that we produce. Inevitably, when talking about beef, the issue, well, how about grass-fed beef? Ooh, that's, a, that's more ecologically sustainable and I don't have to use the feedlots. Truth is, the grass-fed animals contribute more damage to the global warming problem because the cows in the feedlot are only there for, for at the most, 14 months. But, and so they certainly put out lots of methane and carbon dioxide. But to get a... Uh, beef animal uh, who is out on the grasslands uh, big enough to market, they've got to be out there two, two and a half, three years. Well, that's an extra year and a half of walking around, belching out methane, breathing out carbon dioxide, tramping down the streams and the, uh, or polluting the streams, tramping down the soils. Um, they're the worst of the ecological menaces that we face. So don't think you're doing something good for either your body or the planet by eating grass-fed, rain-fed beef there. Uh, again, more marketing, but as far as the planet goes, uh, it's certainly not a healthy food environment by any stretch. My eating habits have become progressively simpler as the years have gone on. I find such flavor in fresh vegetables that there's always at lunch and dinner a big colorful salad and I emphasize colorful dark green romaine lettuce and yellow carrots and, and red peppers and tomatoes and radishes and jicama and every fresh vegetable you can put in there. You've got to have fresh live foods every day. You can't be healthy even as a vegan if you're living on 
the granola bars and energy drinks. You need the fresh live food every day. So please, uh, I have an urge and everyone watching, now have a big salad at least once a day, if not twice a day, lunch and dinner. So a big salad is always there. I'm a wonderful fan of soups, and uh, my wife, Elise, makes great soup. So now she'll make a little big batch of hearty vegetable soup or chili or curry, and we'll eat off of that for three days uh, in, in the refrigerator there. So salads and soups are mainstays. Always have a healthy starch, whether it's potatoes or quinoa or buckwheat. Now there's usually a healthy starch on the plate. And uh, I'm a big fan of something leguminous, something from the legume family, beans, peas, chickpeas, lentils, because they're so rich in protein. So there's always a scoop of lentil stew or a healthy bean taco uh, without using the, the flour, probably use lettuce boats instead, and a uh, uh, bean chili. Uh, we find some ways to get legumes into most every meal. So, uh, and uh, because of all the vegetables, uh, dark greens are the most important. Uh, there's always some steamed kale, broccoli, chard, Brussels sprouts, something dark and green. So the four S's, uh, soup, salad, steamed greens, and healthy starches, those are the, the pillars of every lunch and dinner that I have. And uh, it's what I recommend for my patients, and uh, you can make them absolutely delicious. They're filling, and never crossed my mind to go out and have a cheeseburger when I've got a meal like that waiting at home.